As we absolutely careen towards the year of AI ROI, here's one area where companies are already finding their investments to be profitable. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. As I have said a number of times on this show and will continue to say, I'm sure, one of the key themes for AI at work next year is going to be actual demonstrated performance. The simple reality is, we have shifted fairly aggressively this year from a paradigm of pilots and experiments into much more extensive and large-scale deployments. Which is, of course, not to say that there aren't still lots and lots of things that are still in that zero-to-one pilot stage. Even companies that are quite advanced in their AI and agent strategy still have tons of areas of their company where there's no AI or agents at all. That said, the companies that do have some number of months of full-scale deployments under their belt are increasingly going to care about how those deployments are performing in the real world when it comes to making decisions about how they do the rest of that zero-to-one AI deployment. Arvind Jain, the CEO of Glean, posted about this on LinkedIn this week. He wrote, Lately, I've seen a clear shift in my conversations with enterprise AI leaders, and with Glean, I can see it in the data too. I asked Glean to analyze our customer call notes from the past couple of years to track how the reasons for adopting Glean have evolved. From mid-2023 to 2024, improving general productivity was the top driver, behind 67% of Glean implementations. A year later, that dropped to 37%. Why? Because leaders have realized that productivity for its own sake doesn't move the business forward. It only matters when it shows up in measurable business outcomes. Over the past year, adoption drivers have shifted decisively towards outcome-based goals. Revenue growth, faster ship cycles, better customer support. Accelerating sales revenue, for example, is now about five times more likely to be cited as the top reason for adopting Glean than one year ago. Every function has its own North Star metrics that tie AI efforts directly to business outcomes. The bar for AI has been raised. The new standard isn't general productivity, it's measurable business outcomes. Now, what's interesting is that companies are not only optimistic, but getting more optimistic about their anticipated AI ROI. In 2024, KPMG asked CEOs as part of their annual CEO survey when they anticipated to see a return on their AI investment. The vast majority, 63%, said that it was going to take three to five years. 16% said more than five years, and 20% said one to three years. Only 1% said six months to a year. When they asked that same question this year, the number that said that they anticipated ROI in six months to a year had jumped to 19%, and the number that thought it was going to be one to three years represented a full two-thirds, 67% of respondents. Those pull-forward ROI expectations are, I think, part of what's going to be driving such a focus on it in the next year. If you anticipate a return on your AI investment, in short order, you better believe you're going to spend a bunch of time. Well, you have to actually go out and figure out what your ROI is. And while generalist expectation surveys are super useful, The way that AI is, of course, actually going to make an impact is within specific domains and functions. Not all different types of AI deployments are at the same level of maturity and are going to have different types of dynamics surrounding their performance profile. Artificial Analysis recently released their State of Generative Media survey report. This was based on a survey of personal and organizational users in Q3 of this year. The survey was meant to understand how organizations and individuals are adopting and using both image generation tools as well as video generation tools. Now, notably, this happened before the release of Sora 2 and the OpenAI Video API, but it's still a fairly contemporary study. Let's talk first a little bit about what they found in that sector, and then we'll get into the ROI part. When it comes to image generation, Google Gemini is out ahead of OpenAI. This doesn't surprise me very much, Although the embedded ChatGPT image generation tool can be good under the right circumstances, it has some foibles, and just in general, it's very feature incomplete relative to other image generation models. The fact that it's so high, I think, reflects the fact that it's just embedded in ChatGPT. What's interesting about this list is that while the models you would expect are right at the top, there is still a broad base of other tools that lots of different companies are using. Some might be surprised to see MidJourney down at 17%. I'm not necessarily, in the sense that while MidJourney is artistically and aesthetically top of the tops for me and always has been, it still lags in a lot of the very practical areas you need when you're using it for a business purpose, at least, like, for example, text reproduction. The one that is criminally underused on this list is, of course, Ideogram at just 12%. Ideogram, by a factor of about 10, is my most used image generation tool. On video, once again, Google is in the lead. 69% of respondents were using VO3. A lot of the other top models, though, were from China, with Runway all the way down in fourth, with just 30%. And when it comes to adoption patterns, as you might imagine, personal usage is leading organizational usage. Image generation has reached a pretty significant level of ubiquity for personal use at 89%, and is now used by over half of organizations at 57%. Video lags behind, although not as much as you might think. 
A little over 60% of individual users are using video generation, compared to about a third of organizations. I would have actually bet that was closer to a 20% number, but I may be underestimating how quickly people have understood that AI-generated video could be really useful for some very discrete purposes like ad and social content. Video is definitely more of an experimental stage. While 53% of respondents said that they had integrated generative images into their creative workflow, a full 58% said that they were just experimenting with video. When it comes to organizations, the distribution between deployment, prototyping, and exploring was actually pretty similar across images and video. Deployed into production workflows was actually the leading category, again confirming what I was saying before, that we're quickly moving out of the pure experimentation phase. We'll race through a couple of other interesting nuggets when it comes to this category among organizations. It does appear that marketing and advertising are the key use case for organizations with generative video, at 55% of organizations using it for that purpose. But there's pretty good distribution across other areas, including creative storytelling, design, and educational and training content. When it comes to why people and companies are choosing a model, quality remains at the top, which is kind of what we've seen across a lot of different categories, but cost is a still large consideration, with 53 to 55% of organizations saying that lower total cost is a key factor for them. One other interesting note, it looks like organizations are pretty willing to design new workflows around these new tools, with only 27% saying that integration with tools and workflows was a major factor for images, and just 14% saying that it was a factor for video generation. This says to me that particularly video generation might be a new capability that is coming online for the first time because of AI, rather than as just replacing some existing workflow. There's a lot more in here. I would encourage you to go check this out. But this is the big chart. When asked when you expect to see a return on investment from your organization's media generation initiatives, 34% said that they were already seeing ROI. Another 31% said that they expect ROI within the next 12 months meaning that a full two-thirds of organizations are already seeing ROI or anticipate it within a year. Another 23% said that it would be one to two years. Once again, we see ROI expectations being pulled forward in a pretty significant way. Zephyr on Twitter described this as AI-generated video and image having crossed the ROI Rubicon, and I think that's a pretty good way of putting it. Now, beyond this one study, you're also starting to see reports pop up pretty frequently indicating where organizations are seeing the actual practical benefits of AI. On Monday this week, CNBC published a story called AI is driving huge productivity gains for large companies while small companies get left behind. This was based on a Wells Fargo research note that shared that productivity for the S&P 500 is up 5.5% since ChatGPT. For the smaller companies of the Russell 2000, real revenue per worker is actually down 12%. Now, this is that particularly vicious macro approach to measuring productivity that's not getting in there to do studies around how much faster people are doing their work, but is instead just looking at revenue compared to headcount. But still, the narrative here is that at least for big companies, AI is having a positive impact on productivity. What's interesting is that another study, this time from Intuit QuickBooks, found that small companies were seeing productivity gains. In fact, more than 7 in 10, 75% of those organizations using AI said that it was boosting their productivity up from 46% a year earlier in July of 2024. When you look at the chart, you can see a massive increase in organizations that say AI is very helpful or somewhat helpful, and a very significant decrease in organizations who found it neutral. 56% said that they're more productive than three months ago. This survey, by the way, tried to do away with the complexity of productivity by simply defining it as higher output for the same or lower input costs. There are some other interesting notes in that survey. For example, 24% said that their workdays are shorter thanks to AI, all of which seems to suggest that while market performance for small companies might be off relative to the big guys, small companies are certainly seeing the benefits of AI in practice. I think we are just at the very beginning of this conversation around AI's ROI, and I would expect real results over the following weeks, months, and year. I will use this as an excuse to tell you once again about the big AI ROI benchmarking study that we're doing. We're having people share the use cases that are driving value and what specific value it's driving, be it time savings, cost savings, new revenue, new capabilities, or something else entirely. It's been live for about one day, and we've already had hundreds of use cases with their ROI shared. And I think that with your help, we could actually make this the biggest repository of AI ROI data that exists. Find it at roisurvey.ai. And for now, that's going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. I appreciate you listening as always. And until next time, peace.